everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Since the early days of warfare, bridges have been among the most critical strategic landmarks. Even a small river without a bridge can be defended against a powerful army. As time passed, technology improved, and militaries worldwide decided to focus less on capturing and holding bridges. Instead, they started to build their bridge crossing while moving from place to place. To transport troops and vehicles through water bodies and crevices on land, the militaries around the world started investigating Armored Vehicle Launch Bridges, or AVLBs. These specialized military vehicles are designed to rapidly deploy bridge sections, allowing the troops to cross an obstacle. AVLBs consist of a vehicle chassis carrying bridge modules on the top. The vehicle can launch and retrieve the bridge from either side, allowing the AVLBs to cross its deployed bridge and pick it up on the other side. In recent years, the U.S. Army discovered that the aging AVLB bridges were too slow to keep up with the M1 Abrams tank's top speed of roughly 70 kilometers per hour during field maneuvers. Which is why the United States military decided to develop a heavy assault bridge named the M104 Wolverine. It is an armored vehicle that fills the need for a combat gap-crossing capability with the same mobility, survivability, and transportability as the M1 Abrams tank. The Wolverine is operated by two crewmen who sit within the hull to access bridging controls. Once the site is chosen, the vehicle securely anchors itself in place. The two sections of the bridge are joined together, and then the entire bridge is extended across the obstacle. When it comes to crossing small rivers, a reliable solution is a medium girder bridge, or MGB, which consists of several parts, including the front end of the bridge, including the junction panel, several bays with the top panel, the rear end of the bridge, ramps, decking, and curbs. Each segment has knuckle joints at each end, which are engaged together by inserting a pin through a hole down the length of the knuckle. In this way, several segments are connected end to end to form a girder of the required length, which is then used to cross the river. For areas affected by earthquakes, floods, or other crises, the military uses a Dry Support Bridge, or DSB. It is a rapidly deployable tactical military bridge consisting of prefabricated components and interchangeable sections, transported and assembled by a trained crew.
for deployment, the system comes with all the cranes and heavy lift equipment. Therefore, it just takes a few hours to build a dry support bridge up to 120 feet in length. DSB provides a more permanent mobility solution, and it has proven its worth in conflicts like the Gulf War, the war in Afghanistan, and the Iraq War, where it was impossible to evacuate troops from hostile territories. Over the years, there have been dozens of approaches to portable bridges. One such example is the M3 amphibious rig. It is a 4x4 wheel that unfolds itself on the river or stream, revealing a set of pontoons. The M3 amphibious rig allows crossing the water body in several different ways. For instance, it can ferry troops and vehicles from one side of a lake to another, or attach itself to other M3 rigs, deploying a series of aluminum ramps in order to establish a fully operational bridge. M3 rigs are a durable option as they allow an entire division to cross a water body in minutes. Another valuable approach that has been in use for decades is deployable floating pontoons. This technique is mostly used by special engineering divisions like the 74th Multi-Role Bridging Company of the United States. The pontoons are transported via trucks, helicopters, and other means, and then dropped into the water, where they can be retrieved by fast boats. A team of engineers then gets to work and connects all the bridge sections using a series of built-in clamps. Once in place, the bridge acts as a fully operational road to move troops and vehicles from one end to the other. Crossing rivers is a hectic task but the United States Marine Corps has a unique solution for it. They use bridge erection boats, or BEBs, to construct temporary water bridges. BEBs act as ferries across strategic waterways while giving thrust anchorage against strong currents during bridge construction. The system also consists of modular, foldable pieces made of aluminum that can be disassembled and transported by trucks. These folded bridge sections are launched into the water, where they pop up. BEBs can also be used to move and connect improved ribbon bridge, or IRB, bays, which are 6.92 meters long, 8.63 meters wide, and 1.30 meters in height when unfolded. It is important to mention that the ramp bay reaches a bank height of two meters and weighs approximately 6,350 kilograms. The BEB operators push individual IRB bays across water bodies to get initial supplies and equipment to the opposite shore. Later, they line up 
and connect IRB bays to create a bridging system spread across wet gaps up to 100 meters long. After lining up all the bays, the structure is used as a floating bridge to ferry military vehicles across open water. During the 1980s, the U.S. Marine Corps began looking for new methods to cross water bodies, ultimately developing the All-Terrain Light Armored Vehicle, or LAV. It is an eight-wheeled armored vehicle that travels on land at speeds of approximately 100 kilometers per hour. Equipped with a 25mm M242 Bushmaster autocannon, two 7.622mm M240 machine guns, and two four-barrel smoke grenade launchers, the LAV is a force to be reckoned with. Along with the capability of patrolling streets, forests, and rural areas, the LAVs can operate amphibiously, which means they can swim, but are limited to non-surf bodies of water, like lakes and slow-moving rivers. Amphibious LAVs are equipped with features such as watertight seals, propellers, and buoyancy chambers, which help them to move quickly through water bodies, such as lakes or ponds, despite weighing almost 10 tons. When an LAV is engaged in amphibious operations, its speed is reduced drastically, from 100 kilometers per hour to 12 kilometers per hour. However, it is still valuable for troops to traverse through water bodies and stay on course for the mission. From floating bridges to amphibious assault vehicles, these advanced methods have allowed the U.S. military to overcome the challenges posed by diverse water bodies. Not only do these methods enhance military capabilities, but they also assist humanitarian missions, disaster relief efforts, and civilian infrastructure development. In the face of evolving threats and changing landscapes, the United States military continues the quest for innovating bridging solutions, which guarantees a promising future with more sophisticated methods for traversing water bodies. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.